I just wanted to know what an upmarket car was like. So I restored this one and uh, found out it's a very good car to drive. It's a bit surprising actually how good it does. I'm Trevor Hudson, I'm now retired and I restore rare and beautiful cars. I have a 1929 Stutz Blackhawk. I bought the car in 2008 and it took me seven years to restore. It has the speeds to body, the six cylinder twin ignition engine, which is overhead camshaft, dual throat updraft carburetor, and it runs a four speed manual gearbox, which runs through into a worm drive differential. The Stutz Motor Car Company was from Indianapolis, that's where they made them. Harry Stutz in the mid teens knocked together a car very quickly and put it out on the track in Indianapolis, and it actually got a very good placing, even though he didn't win it. That's what started him. The cars had a very good reputation. He was very much into enhancing the car to get it to go faster and to win those races. It's a bit of a standout car because it's a little bit unusual. It attracts a lot of attention. And when you pull up, it, usually a few people come and have a look at it. You know, it is a fairly rare car in Australia. They just want, want to know a little bit of background about it. This particular car has a few luxury items on it. It has a golf club compartment to the right hand side where you can stow your golf clubs. It has a form of ABS brakes on it where you can turn the power of your brakes down for slippery roads. And it has a dual rear view mirror so the lady can do a makeup on the left hand side and doesn't interfere with the driver seeing out the rear. They never painted their cars any specific colour. You ordered a car and you chose your colour and your upholstery. My Stutz has painted anthracite and maroon swage line and has raspberry German leather upholstery. It rides really well because it's a long wheelbase. Handles really well for a 1929 car. It sits on the road really good. Corners really well. Goes really well. It puts out about 95 horsepower. It's more than adequate to move the car along pretty good. They were far removed from today's vehicles. It sort of gives you an insight into how they were back in that earlier period, how they drove and, and everything, even though our roads are a lot better now than what they were. When Wall Street crashed in 1929, most of the car makers suffered. A lot of them didn't make it. Stutz just couldn't find their feet. Limped on to 1934, only made a handful then, and that was the end of them. I suppose you could compare the Peter's Milk Factory in Taree to Stutz in some way that it was flourishing and then fell on hard times in the 90s, ended up closing. It was a big employer in the town at the time and produced a, a very, very good product. And I can remember the big smokestacks where they used to burn coal for the boilers. Um, you'd always see them all over town, they were really tall. But uh, yeah, all come to an end. It's nice to be recognised when I won the award at Motor Classica. It was uh, a very good experience. They all loved it down there. They uh, kept coming up to me saying, she's a beauty, and uh, oh, my grandfather had one of those. Yeah, you get a real buzz from the people in the comments, yeah. I'm also restoring some trucks, helping my brother out. The trucks we restore are uh, specific to what our father owned back in the uh, 50s and 60s. We're uh, working on a 1962 Diamond T. They're an American truck. They were known as the Cadillac of trucks. We also have a 1960 uh, International R195, popular truck in their day. 1924 Dodge Tourer, which uh, was restored in uh, 1981. Dad finished it, uh, and that's where I think I got my mojo for the uh, older type cars. It just drives me to create something getting them on the road, just putting them back to how they were when they were new. It's just, you get a real buzz out of it. It just transports you back in time. I just love it.